I'm Shannon Gribbins, and I'm going to be reading three poems from my portfolio that I worked on this semester. They're some of my favorites, and they're some of the ones I've worked uh, pretty hard on, so I hope you guys like them. First one is called, I Am Not Allowed to Yell Anymore. I want it to storm. I want the wind to howl and slam the shutters and let thunder roll across the valley. I want to stand in the rain and let the cold seep through my skin all the way down to my bones until I can't do anything but shake. I want it to storm. Let the sky convey what I cannot. And the second one is called, We Are Addicts of Nostalgia. We are addicts of nostalgia, running with racing hearts across our elementary school playground, pretending we've forgotten how good it feels to run and not feel the weight of the world. The, the swings squeak more now than they did back then, but that's okay. Nostalgia means we can comment on it as we leap into the wood chips that used to cut up our knees when we met as children during recess, not realizing that in 10 years, we'd be wildly different people haunting the same spaces we loved in times of innocence. And the last poem I'm going to read is called An Empty Open Road. My ill-advised road trip is the safest I've felt since this whole pandemic began. Living out of my car, sorting through clothes hurriedly gathered from vacant dorm room drawers, now tossed haphazardly around the back seat of my blue Jeep Cherokee. A toothbrush poking from a backpack pocket, staring at the tangled blankets heaped in the trunk. Next to me in the passenger seat, a map sits patiently, waiting for the next lonely stop in this time of isolation. Thank you. Hello, my name is Amy Linehan and I'm going to be reading four poems today. The first is titled, Life of a Thrift Shop Find. Stuck on a half broken hanger in the back of the shop with threads stretching at the two XL shoulders that droop off my frame and only 25 stitched stars on the flag across the chest. I wonder how you got there and who owned you before that decided you were just not worn enough to survive another round of spring cleaning. Instead, dropped you off in a plastic bag with a dozen of your other closeted siblings, long since bought while you waited patiently, lonely for me. And now you sit folded atop a 50% off cardigan, waiting again until next winter. The next poem I'm going to be reading is titled Dreams don't tell the future. The universe doesn't provide some hazy peak on what might or might not happen depending on when I wake up. But if my father falls swiftly off the edge of some imagined cliff on the cusp of my sleepy consciousness, and my heart feels like it's tumbling down with him, or my eyes shoot open at the same moment as a bang from the gun pointed at my mother, or my friend, or me, shaking my bed frame with forceful sobs, gasping, grasping through ghostly tears, fingers frantic across sheets, fumbling, stumbling, urgent to send that good morning text, desperate hands frozen, clutched and waiting, anxious to see those three dots appear, good morning, have a great day, wake me up and soothe me from having dreamed up such a nightmare. The third poem I'm going to be reading is titled, A Moment Just Before Dawn. Moonlight weaves itself between monochrome leaves, creeping quiet through my window where I whisper with the stars. Oh, how sleepy earth seems, blanketed in the purple shadows of dawn until birds sing her awake once again into muted morning. And the final poem I'm going to be reading is titled, You Can't Pull Up Roots from a Farm Town. She says none ever really leave, she says to watch the bird's nest up in the hayloft, that as far as their wings carry them, part of their heart lingers in town, longing for that dusty smell of cornfields in the summer, grocery store parking lot filled with lifted trucks, boots covered in spring dew mud and manure, barn cats, farm chores, straw in my hair, late to school because old Daisy's kid decided it was time to drop bleeding into the morning. See, she says to me, Look how their eggshells gather below the rafters, till one day they're gone, flown across a hazy horizon. Thank you. 
Hello everyone, my name is Carrington Connor and I will be reading four poems from my portfolio. Um, the first poem I'm going to be reading is titled Snooze. There must be something in this quarantine air because currently the record is set at 17. 17 snoozed alarms, that is. Each morning I surprise myself. You see, no matter how many I prepare with variations of unpleasant sounds, no matter how few minutes I set them apart, while double checking the volume is at full blast, they are unsuccessful in their attempted goal. To feel less guilty, I tell myself it's a talent. Only the most profound, dedicated, deepest sleepers have the ability to snooze and fall right back to sleep. The second poem I'm going to be reading is titled Spring Cleaning. It's hard not to focus on the negative when each day seems to deliver a storm of bad news full of staggering emergent statistics pessimistic predictions, and new laws to fulfill the idea that we should be suffocated by fear. A distraction seems necessary, so since there is nothing better to do, the day will be spent cleaning forgotten items left under the bed. A dusty storage bin is revealed, which preserved old belongings I'd somehow forgotten. A black and white polka dotted coin purse, a bookmark with dog ears, a portable DVD player, charger included, a keychain from the San Diego Zoo, and that old picture of you. The third poem I'm going to be reading is titled Seasons. Subtle signs indicate the time has come for a change. Quiet mornings bring an early sunrise, fresh snow, and windshields that call for a defrosting. We don't mind that we must rely on body heat to preserve some warmth in this cold winter air but soon the afternoon phone calls become less frequent and the sun rises a bit later so mornings become dark and lonely. Now the ground is covered in a dewy blanket and songs from the trees tell me you no longer require my body heat to keep you warm. And the final poem I will be reading is titled Bedtime Routine. A cherrywood dresser drawer stocked with matching pajama sets suitable for each of the seasons accumulated over the last eight years or so, the collection has grown to consist of 100% cotton plaid flannel pants in five distinctive color schemes, one for each day of the week, and that lightweight waffle knit matching set with worn-in cotton that pills at every seam, the blue and white striped boxer shorts with that frayed hem, and since family tradition requires a new purchase each year, there's one too many sets of thermal Christmas themes. But each night I find myself subconsciously reaching for that same navy blue oversized t-shirt, long enough to be considered a dress. Night after night, it wraps me in a blanket of comfort, consuming me with memories that quickly send me to sleep. Until eventually, your scent fades away almost as quickly as you did. Thank you. Hi everyone, I am going to be reading four poems to finish my portfolio and I'll give a little background about each poem and what motivated me to write it. The first one is about being in a weird place with the person you love and you know you'll make up and get back to normal, it's just a matter of waiting and kind of that period of sadness before you do. I'm sorry. I woke up to dark skies and a memory of you. Tears from my dream were replaced with rain, falling heavy from the morning sky. A feeling so lonely, even the streetlights were confused by the gloominess that surrounded me. As I lay, dazed and bewildered, trying not to listen to my past. My obsession for freedom that led to a nomadic state of comfort. Like the sun did not want to see the moon and face greeting one another, as the day was dashed and divided into two parts, equaling one. Until finally, the clouds parted and the sun peeked through. The sun and moon must have made up. When were we? My second poem is about feeling trapped and wanting to break through and start new. Man trap. Descend upon me, gods and goddesses of my past, present, and future. Unleash me from your grasp, this burden of a broken heart. Shatter what I know to be fear and leave me to put back the pieces of broken. 
Create me a new existence and allow me to live on my own and be whole. For this is it. Man trap. My third poem, I'm actually going to read a mystery. This is called, This is My Commitment. Pay attention to the fury, the most indescribable intensity, your unspeakable wondering to my inexpressible feeling. I saw the expected destroyed, how I mourned the nightfall when my tears would tear me apart from you and lead me down into the darkness where I'd find myself saying good night, gently as it goes. My last poem is one that took a lot of work and was kind of my risk poem. Originally, I was writing about another person and the poem was titled, You Don't Fool Me, until Professor Soto helped me see that the person I was talking about is myself. This is, I don't fool me. I was never taught religion, but I loved Easter. Rushing downstairs to see what the Easter bunny brought, a basket filled with jelly beans, chocolates, and fake grass, pastel colored pinks, yellows, purples, and blues, the dress my mother picked out for me, I wore to Sunday church, paired with white tights and Mary Janes, pretty and uncomfortable. I pretended to sing and asked for forgiveness for my sins, a sign of the times on the day Jesus resurrected. Every Easter Sunday was this way, predictable basket filled with candies, dressing up and pretending to be someone I'm not. Although I believe in the person I want to become by resenting what I pretended long ago. So those are my poems. I am really grateful for this course and for everyone I met and got close with and I hope everyone has a fun summer. Hello my name is Kieran Vinnie and I'm going to be reading three poems today. The first one's called Translation Error. I say I lost it because that's easier than explaining how I deliberately strangled it, discarded it like dried out eyeliner. It must have gotten misplaced in the moving shuffle, and now, in some corner of a closet in the house where I grew up, gathering dust, my accent lies. No use to me now, oceans away where a stray syllable, a T too emphatic and elongated O, opens the door to questions about my backstory, the multinational family affairs that explain how I became an alien at 14, devoting myself so fully to the task of assimilation that I didn't question what I might lose in translation, the feedback falling on my insecure ears. It's not your accent, you just talk too fast or need to enunciate, but I know what that means. I take a nail file to my vocal cords, sanding down the edges, carefully flattening my vowels with a hair straightener to be more easily understood by everyone but myself. It never feels natural. A lip gloss smile that can't hold up to scrutiny, but it becomes a habit to avoid phrases that will make me sound overly erotic, twist sentences like tributaries away from the word water, find safety in a certain level of drawl. Never mind that I still think in my native dialect, or that words form in a different part of my mouth when I'm alone. Easier to be muzzled and escape the questions. I gulp down acetone, hoping it will strip away the muscle memory of how I used to sound. Painted mouth to hide the damage, sealed shut. Years later, I try to talk and it pulls at the scabs. Cracks appear, blood pools in my throat and it occurs to me. Too late, of course, too late. I may have made a mistake. The second poem is called Saiga. The antelopes in Kazakhstan that died suddenly by the thousands in a matter of days, brought down by once benign bacteria in their throats that rose up with the temperature and humidity and killed their hosts while the planet Earth film crew watched in horror. Did they know it was coming? Not the specifics, obviously. Animals have too much blind faith in their own bodies for that. But did their strange noses catch the scent of carbon? Or did they see humans playing an executioner for the rest of their habitat? Did something in their bones recognize the change and see that their time was over? Did their dark eyes, just before the life flickered out, lock with those of the BBC cameraman as if to say, you'll be next, don't you see, don't trust your gut? But no one listens to a corpse, or even a hundred thousand. We have too much blind faith in our own bodies and our own creations to heed a warning sign. Um, the last poem is called Culin Ridge, Oil and Canvas, 1975. We hung that picture up nearly six years ago, once we'd finished painting the hallway of our new home, covering the previous owner's questionable tastes with our own, off-white with a hint of lavender, 
Isn't that the American dream? To own a house in the suburbs with off-white walls and a fill it with piles of magazines that we pretend to read, and carrots that sprout secretly in the back of the fridge, and paintings of places we'll never go, blurrily rendered, like this mountain range in an austere grey frame that hangs crooked no matter how many times we adjust it, like everything in this house, always not quite right, no matter what we do. Thank you.